Hi everyone and welcome back to VFXY once again. So in today's video, we are going to see how we can use all the defocus node inside Nuke. Yes, so it will be a very informative video. So I hope you will love it. So without wasting any time, let's get started. Okay, as you can see over there, I am having one render and I did some tweakings and it is rendered from Maya. And also if I have to show you, I am having my deep data for this information as well, which will help me to explain few nodes inside Nuke, which will help us to do defocusing and all right. So as you know, defocus is a very important part of VFX, which will help us to defocus my background. And sometimes it helps us to defocus our foreground as well to keep my character or my main subject in focus, right? So let's see what kind of nodes we have inside Nuke to do those things. So first thing first, uh, we are having a node called a blur. Uh, although this is not a very accurate node for doing defocusing, but yeah, sometime uh, we used to do defocus a uh, far distance objects or background. Apart from blur, we are having actual defocus, which is again a better tool than blur. Uh, apart from that, we are having a convolve node, which is again better than these two. Normally I use to defocus my 2D plates if needed. And apart from that, we are having a G Z defocus, which is again a better accurate tool to do defocusing based upon a separate pass, which is G depth pass or Z depth pass. Apart from that, if we are using Nuke 14 or 15, probably you will have a node called Bokeh in built node, which is Bokeh. Earlier it was PG Bokeh. Uh, it comes as separate Bokeh node, but in newer version of Nuke, it's by default. And I think this is a much accurate node for doing defocusing. But you have to remember that this is again a little heavier on your computation, right? So let's start one by one. If I am going to use blur, it's pretty uh, straight and forward. If I'm going to do blur, if you can see, I am having every pixels blurred out. I'm not having anything on my highlights. Everything is smudged. Basically what it's doing, it's blurring every pixels on same value, right? So blur is pretty simple or uh, self-explanatory. Now here comes defocusing. And if I'm going to defocus my the same scene with same intensity might be like this. So if you can see, I am having better highlight kind of stuff. You can see I'm having a better treatment of highlight, right? In defocus. Although my character should be in focus, I'll let you know how to do that. But uh, in defocus, we can see I am having a better result or better output specifically on my highlights, right? So in over here, I'm having multiple options. Like if I'm going to change my aspect ratio, might be I'll do two. If you can see, I'm having my kind of elliptical bokeh I'm getting, right? So you can do that kind of uh, thing as well. Scaling, I can use it in X axis and Y axis. Might be I can do two is to one might be uh, same way which aspect ratio was working on if I'm going to use height like two might be anamorphic kind of blur I am getting. So these kind of effect we are having and uh, you can use it very oftenly, right? Apart from that, I am having uh, another node which is like convolve. It gives us a better result than blur and defocus because I'm having one filter input and one image input. Basically image is that which I want to blur and filter is that on the basis of which filter you want to blur. This is again a uh, very close to how our lens properly work. So I'm having a few filters or bokeh shape over here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to connect my one bokeh shape. And before doing that, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a copy node and probably I'll copy my alpha because in this particular thing, I'm not having alpha and I'll, I'll do red channel to my alpha. It's pretty simple. So I'm getting my alpha as well. And if I'm going to see convolve, it's working pretty weird. And to make it like something which I want, I'm going to add a transform node. 
and in that particular transform i am going to scale it down as per my requirement now if you can see i am having a much 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 better result on highlights i am getting a bokeh and if needed i can change my bokeh shape can you see it's working what i want can you see that it's working pretty nice like this can you see so this is again a much better result i am getting and if you can see i am having a better result on my defocusing in convolve i am not having much controls but it's giving me good result now here comes my gd focus and it's the tool which i use oftenly when i am doing my cg compositing to use my gd focus node it's pretty simple i am having one input of image so might be i can take one dot node over here and i'm going to connect my dot node first thing first i need to change my depth z because if i'm going to show over here i'm having my depth in z channel not depth z so i need to fix this first so what i will do i will take a node called copy and i'll copy my same thing and over here what i will do i will copy my z red to my depth z right it's not needed probably i will uh, come over here and might be i can change my depth over here but it's uh, up to you how you are going to use it so over here uh, i'm going over here and take my focal point over here and also rather than using result i will go and i'll change focal plane setup so in focal plane setup i need to take care about how much focus i want so i will change my depth of field and if you can see i'm having a green might be you'll have three colored information one is green one is blue and one is red green is in focus blue is in closer to camera and red is in far from camera so uh, accordingly uh, you will have your depth information or blur information i want my statue to be in focus so i'll set my focus plane and uh, rather than using focal plane setup i'll use result also you can see i'm having a uh, artifact so might be i can use math for zero to depth it will give me a better result and also if you can see if i'm going to change size my highlights are working pretty fine like this right and if you can see i'm having a good bokeh if you want to know this tool jet day focus i have created a separate video on jet day focus you can go and you can check that video so if i want to control my bokeh shape might be i can use disk to blade it and i can change blade as per my requirement but also i'm having a filter input so might be i'll go over here and i will use filter directly like this and if i'm going to use my filter automatically it will be changed so to do that what i need i need rather than using bladed i am going to use image and if you can see i am having a same bokeh which i am giving input like this can you see like this can you see like this so this is something pretty accurate right and if you can see uh, this thing is my focus and apart from that everything is in defocus so this is how my z defocus works now if i want to use my bokeh node i am having multiple inputs like input kernel input camera input and deep input right so what i am going to do i am going to directly connect my input to my bokeh so in this new bokeh node i can use my jet day focus as well and deep information as well to do my defocusing so let's concentrate on jet day focus how it works by default jet day focus or depth channel will on if i am going to check my z data and if we may reduce it and if i'm going to pick this thing almost i can see i am having 285 might be almost close to 300 value i am getting close to 300 so what i will do i will use this data i'll go to bokeh node and over here in focal plane 
I will do might be 300. So first thing first, you need to change my output type to defocused image to focal distance visualization. And also you need to keep your front multiplier to zero. And I will keep my focal plane to 310 or something. So might be I can go and I can check I'm getting nothing. Uh, okay, I need to change uh, 310. And if I'm going to do that, if you can see, I'm having my statue in red color. That means it will be in focus. And I'm going over here to defocused image. Now, if you can see, I'm having a pretty fair defocused image. And also my bokeh are coming nicely. So if I need to change my bokeh, uh, definitely I'm having a kernel input and if needed, I can connect it like this as well. As soon as I'm going to connect my kernel input like this, I'm not getting any changes. So I have to go to kernel and kernel type rather than using circular, I'm going to use input. And as soon as I'm going to use input, you can easily see I'm having all the controls of my bokeh shape like this. Can you check this? can see so this is something you can try it out and yes this is based upon my g depth but also i'm having another input which we call deep input can you see that deep input if i want to use my deep input so what i will do i will call my deep information and this is something i felt this is the best way to do defocusing but keep it in mind that this is uh, very heavy so before connecting my defocus i'll go to bokeh and for safer side i'm going to switch off my depth channel and also i'm going to connect my deep information like this and same way if you can see i'm having my value like 30 something 3010 and same value i am getting a better result so if i am going to use my jet day focus for defocus or blurring if you can see i am having some artifacts but if i am going to disable this and i am going to use my deep input and if you can see i am having a neat and clean output right so same options we are having and same way i am having my kernel inputs and if i am going to change this thing automatically you can see uh, you, you are having different results might be I can go to a circular or might be I can change my bladed information and if I'm going to change is it or not circular I'm going to use uh, aperture blades and might be I can change my aperture blades like this and if I'm going to change it if you can see my blades are changing if I want my inputs might be I'm having my inputs like this can you see so I can change anytime. So these are the nodes which we are using currently inside Nuke to do my all day focusing work. I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope you have learned something new in today's video. And if you think that my videos are helping you, please don't forget to like this video, share this video. And if you're new to this channel, please don't forget to subscribe. With this said, this is VFX Vibe. Signing off. Have a good day.